guys, welcome back. It is Friday, and you know what that means because we're doing this again. Um, it is fly tying Friday. So today's pattern, we're gonna tie, um, as you guys know, I'm all about super simple flies that catch fish, that last a long time, may not be super, super aesthetically pre pleasing, um, but pretty simple bugs. And uh, today is no exception. Um, we have a small crayfish pattern on the menu today. You're not gonna be able to see it that well. You'll see it a little bit better when I zoom in here onto the vise when we start tying it. But it's a super simple pattern. Um, I tie this in olive, brown, black, and then like kind of your classic like fiery orange uh, crayfish color. But um, most of the crayfish that I see around where I'm at are kind of in this little size two to, to one um, olive color. So olive is typically the color that I tie the most for these things, um, especially because when I'm specifically trying to imitate these when they're just sized, which um, it's important to think of crayfish just like any other, um, any other bug that you fish to match the hatch on a river. Um, there are times when these are targeted and there are times when they're not targeted. Um, when they, in the springtime, they gestize, meaning they, they ditch their outer shell and grow a new one. Um, but during that period, uh, when they ditch that shell is when they are at their most desirable, um, by fish, meaning they are way more vulnerable. They're not hard. They'll target them more often. They will still eat crayfish, um, having shells all the time. So this is a fly that you can catch fish on just like you can catch a fish on a streamer when they're not necessarily targeting fish. But um, the best time to be fishing crayfish patterns is in the spring and I believe in the fall. I'm not 100% sure about that. But in the fall and spring when they gestize and they become these little soft morsels of meat that trout have no issues going after. So uh, that's enough talking from me. Let's get to it and start. Okay, so this pattern um, is going to start off with some of the same uh, jig hooks that I use on a lot of my balance patterns. Is this uh, must add 90 degree heavy water? That's pretty bright. Let's see if I can get it a little closer. <laughs> this uh, must add 90 degree heavy wire uh, jig hook. Uh, it's a good hook, and they're a little bit cheaper than Gamagatsu's are. And I actually really, I really like this hook. I think I like it a little bit more than the Gamagatsu's, anyways. So. Um, we have that, and then we have a 5.5 millimeter tungsten lead, or sorry, tungsten um, cone head. And basically, this is a fly where if you see, ever see crayfish on the bottom of the water, you're, they're always bouncing along the bottom, kind of shooting along, being pretty sporadic in the way that they move. So we want this fly to be heavy. So this is a 0 .3, 0 0.035 uh, lead um lead wire, it's kind of a heavy heavy lead wire. Um, there's an actual little thing for it. And uh, basically we're gonna wrap this up the hook. Basically the entire hook is going to be lead. Um, and you wanna make sure you start a little bit, a little ways back. Um, that way you can push it up underneath the cone. Okay, so we have that right there. And then we'll just kind of spin these little, that little edge piece off and then push it down kind of making sure that that wrap goes all the way around. And then this one, you just pinch tight there and it'll break right off. And you're gonna push that directly underneath the cone. And then what I do before I do any wraps, just to make sure this this uh, pattern doesn't slip around or slide around at all. Is that zoomed all the way in? Yeah, I guess it is. Um, just to make sure this pattern doesn't slide around at all, is I'll take some super glue um, and just dab a little bit behind it and a little bit on there. So when I start to wrap up the body of this with my thread, it'll seal it down and it won't go anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll take my thread and I'll push it up right against that lead, wrap back. And there's a less than ideal little lump right here that you can see the transition is not super smooth. But we're actually going to kind of use that to our advantage when we tie in these legs and little uh, antennas that these crayfish have. So I'm going to wrap up that. I don't necessarily really need to cover it at all. It's all going to get covered by material here in just a second anyways. But so what I'll do is I'll just do maybe a layer or two of, uh, of wrap there <clears throat> with my thread. And then first things first is we will take some of these delectable Snake River Fly rubber legs. And as you can see, they transitioned from 
uh, olive to brown to olive again. And I like having just a little bit of contrast in these flies. Them being so few materials, it is very nice to have um, a little bit of contrast that just is going to get that, that those fish to grab it a little bit. And what I'll do with these legs is I like to have just the tip of the of the actual antenna be this brown. So I will just cut that right there. And that way I have a tiny bit of brown and then I have a long strip of olive. It's actually more of like a chartreuse than anything. But then I'll cut those again, cutting them to make sure that they're the proper length that I would like. And I'll take these and I'll just pinch these together. Because these essentially, on if you ever see crayfish, these will literally just stick right out of the back of them. And you want this to be, I like to tie these about the length of the whole fly. So if you look, this hook, or length of the hook, I should say. So the hook's are right about there. So I'll go straight back with that, and I'll pinch these, tie them in, do a loose wrap first, to, and that way you can kind of readjust them to where you want. And then what I will do is I'll wrap them up to this transition where my lead wire is, basically helping me make that taper more reasonable. And I'll just rip those out. And as you can see now, that's starting to take a little bit better shape right there for the body, the transition of the body. And there you can see right there, you just basically just have two router legs sticking out the back. Um, and these uh, crayfish that I see are kind of in that, they're like a brown, green, like a brownish olive. So this like golden brown eye stub is actually perfect for what uh, the ones that I see the most and the ones that I like to tie. So basically what I'll do first before I add my legs is I'm gonna take a little chunk of this dub and I'm going to tie in a little ball of dub right at the rear of this before I put on my legs. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give a platform for these uh, small pine scroll strips to push off of and to create a nice V, a very distinctive and impressionist, impressionistic, I don't know, a very good impression of crayfish legs. Um, and then next, we have this little pine squirrel, uh, just kind of like a little olive green pine squirrel. Um, and it's important to note that the longer you leave these on the back of this hook, the more they're going to move, which could be good. But when you're pulling it upstream, they will have a tendency to join together um, as they're being pulled. And you'll kind of lose that distinctive um, split that you want. So when I'm tying this pattern, I actually leave these legs relatively short. I guess they're just claws. I leave these actually pretty short. Um, so as you can see there, that's maybe three quarters of an inch. And that's even too long, honestly. So I'm going to strip off a tiny bit of this so I can tie it in lower. Okay. So now we're sitting right around a half inch on each of these legs. And uh, I'm just going to trim that real quick. Okay. Sitting right around a half inch on each of these legs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each leg and you'll be able to see there's a little ball of dub right here. So I'm just gonna turn this on my side so I can get that length right. And I'm just gonna butt this up right against that. You're gonna to wanna to do a loose wrap just to get it trapped down. And once you get it in the, in the position that you want, you're gonna tie it down nice and tight. And as you can see, that forces that leg out very far, which is what we want. Because when this thing's swimming, we want those legs to be distinctive and you wanna be able to tell from a good distance away, okay, that's a crayfish. Um, so same thing on this other side. We're going to grab a little half-inch strip of a uh, rabbit or a uh, pine squirrel. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Same length, same everything. It's going to be as symmetrical as you can get it. I'm going to pinch that down so it's the same length. And I'll pinch there. And I'll tie that in just like that. Okay, and that piece of pine squirrel leather is a little unruly. I'll try and get that under control. There we go. Okay, so I've trapped that down. And we're going to dub over all this anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but just for my personal eyes there. Okay, so as you can see, I'll take this off the vice real quick. That right there is a great rear end for a crawfish pattern, especially if it's small, you want it to be nice and um, you wanted to just create the impression of this being a crayfish. Um, so, cinch that in. Um, and then we're going to add some copper wire. 
I don't necessarily add this copper wire for any reason other than durability on this fly. Um, because once you add this dub, the last thing you want is for after you catch a couple fish on this pattern, for the dub to start peeling back and revealing just, you know, a nice little olive and lead wire body. So what I'll do is I'll tie that in. And now my uh, wire is good and set there. And uh, so then we'll take the same dub, this uh, golden brown ice dub, and we're going to dub up this body. Um, and since we're adding wire and it's going to be pretty durable, you don't need to add a ton of dub, but you want enough to build the body up just enough for it to look like an actual crayfish. Because they are pretty thick, they're pretty good chunks of meat, so it's important to recognize that, um, that the taper of the body needs to be pretty similar. Okay, and so I only will add a little bit of dub at a time. I don't really like dealing with a long thing here, so I can be a little more precise. So, okay, so I'll get that wrap in there. And then we want just touching wraps with this ice dub all the way up. Okay, got that about halfway up, so we're going to add a little bit more. And we're going to leave some room at the head of this fly to add, um, like, the actual uh, head of the body. Because they do have a little bit of a taper and then it goes to a bulkier part of their head. Um, and you want that to look pretty pretty natural. Okay. So we'll go keep going up the body. Oh, thread broke. Okay. If that happens, which it will, it's kind of a pain, pain in the butt. You're going to want to pinch your thread and just add it on anyways. Um, that's annoying. So I'm just going to wrap this up, just pinching this. This is where hackle pliers come in pretty handy. I don't know where mine are. I'm not, I'm not really worried about it. So we'll just continue wrapping. I'm going to make sure that this taper looks good because that's what I want. Okay. So now that I'm there, I'm going to take my thread. And that's not going to go anywhere for a second. I'm going to fix this real quick. Pull this back through. So what you're going to want to do, especially if this stuff happens like this, you're going to do a couple loose wraps and then take your thread and pull it tight so that you don't have any loose uh, loose ends there. And then you're going to want to cross it over and just basically tie it off like that. And then this will just break. And then I'll just take my scissors again and I'll just cut that there. Okay. So we still, even though that is a pain in the butt, that mishap doesn't, isn't really a big deal. So we're going to take this and... You're going to note that when I was wrapping my dub up the body, we wrapped this direction, right, uh, which would be clockwise. Now we're going to go, we're going to counter wrap this wire to make sure that it's trapping this down in a different direction. So we're going to take our wire, we're going to wrap up the body just like this, just cross wrapping. And that's just going to make sure that this is nice and um, tight in the actual body of the fly. Okay, perfect. And we'll take the wire and helicopter it like, just like that. Okay, so we're basically done. Um, all we add here is the head of the fly. And we're going to use the same pine squirrel that we were using. And a lot of times you'll see people, you know, add this pine squirrel to a dubbing loop to reduce bulk. That's actually the opposite of what we want to do. We want to add some bulk to the head of this fly and make sure that it is nice and uh, thick at the top of this. Because when it gets wet and it's in current, this is going to push back, and it's going to create a nice little head on the body. So what we'll do is we're going to take our pine squirrel, same pine squirrel. We're going to tie in just on the tip of this, and we're going to leave just enough space to get probably three or four wraps. Uh, realistically, you want to get about three right here. And we're going to just wrap this directly up. Again, each wrap you wrap, you're going to palmer back. And make sure that you're just wrapping directly over it so that you can create a good taper just like that. And then that wrap will be my last one. Take my thread and I'm going to take my pine squirrel. And I'm going to make sure that I'm tying that down nice and tight. I'll pull it to the very top just like that if I can. Which will just give me a better spot to tie this off at. I'm going to get one more good wrap behind it. Okay. And then I'm going to take scissors, and again, you're going to want a nice, sharp uh, point 
to your scissors so you can kind of reach in behind this cone to get rid of this and make it look nice and clean just like that okay and that right there is the entire flight so what we'll do now is I'll add a couple wraps here and I will click finish just like that and you can add glue if you want I usually add glue but um, I'm not gonna add it right now uh, but that right there and then I'm gonna move this a little closer so you guys can actually see it but this fly right here That is a super, super, super simple crayfish pattern on a jig hook, so you can fish it on the bottom. Very, very simple fly. And that is, to me, is what fly tying is about. It's about tying flies that work, and um, you can whip out a good number of them, and they're going to last you a very long time. Um, I hate buying flies. I hate going to fly shops and buying flies and paying outlandish prices for stuff I can make myself. Um... So no offense to fly shops, and obviously if you don't tie flies, that's where you need to get them. You need to go into the smaller shops, not the big stores. Got to support the shops. But um, basically, make sure you're just tying flies that are simple and durable, that'll last you a long time, and that catch fish. And there's a lot of there's been a lot of uh, sweat equity, and uh, that have gone into a lot of these flies that I fish often, um, just through you know, testing and developing and making flies that I can fish in my style of fishing. Obviously, not everybody fishes the way that I do, but um, it's important to make sure that you have flies that work, <laughs> that are easy to tie. And so that's what this pattern is for me. And uh, give a couple a tie and give them a test. These are great for bass and bluegill, crappie, everything that will eat a crayfish or a small crustacean. Um, but bluegill especially love this pattern. Uh, I catch a lot of my bluegill on these on the smaller flies that I tie like this. But um, you can tie these larger if you have bigger ones. You can tie them in different colors. Um, but give them a test and uh, let me know how you do. I'm, I'm honestly super curious about how these flies work in other regions. They kill it where I'm at. Kill it in like kind of the west, you know, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, um, and kind of this vicinity. Um, but let me know how they do. And uh, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Fly Tying Friday. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.